Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have a story for you today that's for Western years somewhat unbelievable. So I thought I would start with literary precedent. First, I have read that in India there's a religion called the Jain religion, J-A-I-N, in which the believers honor and respect the life of insects. And in fact, I have read they have sweepers to go before them as they walk along the street to sweep the insects out of the way so that they won't injure their own karma by killing any insects. That's the first precedent. And the second one has to do with some of the stories about King Solomon. Um, one of the stories I read about King Solomon of the Bible is that he needed to go to war and he made alliances with, I hope I get this right, peacocks and the jinn, otherwise known as the genies of the desert, and with the ants. And so he was able to talk to the peacocks, the jinn, and the ants, and they were able to help him to win wars for his people. And I have one other story that I've read about that has to do with some Native American tribes that w worshipped the red ant as their ancestors. And there are pictures in the caves of these ancestor ants that you can see online if you want to. Um, I've heard it said that some indigenous peoples also greatly admire the ants for their industry and for working together to to achieve the ends for the whole group and pattern their groups their tribes after the fine behavior of the ants the loyalty the industriousness the, the emphasis on the collective end that's as what I've read about and those are my literary lead-ins for you because the story that I'm about to tell today is it's a little bit out there and it's good to know that there are others who have had encounters with ants I was doing the vacuuming today in the living room and something happened that has happened before in this year uh, this is the first year that I've noticed it. I started to hear voices on the astral plane, clear voices. And it was as if these voices, sometimes, sometimes I hear these voices when I vacuum. It makes it very unpleasant to vacuum, in fact, because there was what seemed to be a really loud, strident male voice trying to yell at me on the astral plane louder than the vacuum cleaner and the vacuum cleaner is pretty loud it's a hoover so today though I was prepared I was ready to vacuum no matter what the obstacles and the obstacles were many because in addition to that voice that I heard before there were many other voices chiming in yelling and having a wonderful time like at a parade they were really enjoying the sound of my hoover and they, they were so loud I I tried focusing on the hoover thinking that the sound of the hoover might drive them away I was thinking maybe these are just very loud people and their astral forms are visiting me because of the sound of the of the vacuum cleaner. I was thinking a lot of things. I was trying to figure it out. And then I opened the coat closet door next to the front door. And what did I see? But a wide, uh, moving very fast, a wide 
swath of tiny black ants and they were heading for the spare bag of kibble that I had for my cat. And they had already gotten into it and I suddenly realized that once again what I was hearing was an invasion of insects into the house. Insects that really love the sound of the vacuum cleaner. I had no idea they love to shout and have a wonderful time with sounds like vacuum cleaners. To me, a vacuum cleaner sound, a motor noise, is, is what I call misqualified energy. I got that term from Peggy Black at Morning Messages. She's a light worker and a healer. And uh, I've been listening to her for years and reading her books and like that. And I got that, that term misqualified energy really has stuck with me. And I think of it especially with regard to motor noises. It seems though that the ants really love that sound. And I have to wonder what their preferred dimension is if they like that sound. It must be one of the lower dimensions. One of the first three in the lower triangle of the energy field that, that a human would communicate with the ants. Um, with. But on the other hand, they have this ability, this telepathic ability. I even heard the queen for a while. She had a beautiful, mellifluous voice. It was very impressive. It was stately. It was motherly. It was, it was a voice that any worker ant would die for. I feel that to be true. And many did die today because I dove right in and removed the kibble bag and cleaned up the whole area and caulked the area where uh, the door jams touched the floor, which was the weak point, the entry point, and so forth. And when I finished, I turned the vacuum cleaner back on and it was almost no telepathic noise. So I'm here to tell you today that there is such a thing, it seems, as telepathy in the ant realm, and that it's centered on the deep rumbling sound of the motor noise, the lower chakra, maybe the basal chakra, the desire to survive, but also, I think, um, skipping up to the third chakra, the desire to make one's mark on the world. They are very territorially aggressive extremely so and very in their own way very sexually aggressive because there are so many of them outside under the house trying to get in you know trying to get in where they're not wanted and and they don't seem to care so much you know so I say territorial aggression sexual aggression and also amazingly telepathy through the third eye point. They must have some faculty for that. I heard them say once today, refer to themselves as I, and that I take to be the deva or overlighting spirit of the ants. Um, the collective soul perhaps represented by that deva. And that deva might be the spokesman for them. But yet, there were so many other voices, and it seems like since the shift this is happening, I never noticed it before, uh, it seems like every worker ant has a voice, and the queen, and the deva of the ants. So, it's relatively quiet in my house right now, thank goodness. And while it was quiet, I was vacuuming over by the patio door and back, and what I started to hear were the voices of the silverfish. There are some silverfish over that way. And they sound, amazingly enough, rather like the brownies. I would not be surprised if the silverfish, in their natural habitat, under trees, under leaf debris, and maybe loving the, the smell of damp 
wet woods um, might have very great deal in common with the brownies. And they, their language may reflect the intonation and the cadence, the tenor, the depth, the quiet peace of the brownies. And there may be lively brownies, but, but the silverfish, they're companions in the forest, typically not in houses, have this deep, quiet, um, they don't like the noise of the vacuum cleaner at all. They can talk too, but they talk very differently from the ants. I guess some of you light workers, way showers, pathfinders, and healers are finding out about the the many voices of the animal realm, of the insects, of the furry animals, of the winged animals, of the scaled animals, just every animal has a voice. It can be off-putting if those voices are too many in our homes. So I suggest careful cleaning and great tidiness in our homes. And uh, when we want to hear those many voices, we can go outside and hear them. Uh, that's my opinion, is that we need quiet in our homes, and there's no way to accomplish that with, with a lot of insects around. Now, the insects have a different idea about it. In fact, I had a conversation with the ants today, and I explained to them that I expect them not to be in my home. They can be outside, they can be under the house, but they can't be in my house. And they said, oh, we thought it was all right to be here. We thought we were sharing your house, and I had to reiterate. Uh, you may have that conversation too. They're very, very intelligent and very, very different from us. I keep thinking maybe they're from Orion, maybe they're from Alpha Centauri, and maybe from both places that the overlighting influence uh, comes to us. I wouldn't be surprised if as people become more and more accustomed to star beings that visit Earth or are here on Earth helping to guide us, that we will be running into some very advanced beings of light that resemble uh, the ants and even the silverfish in terms of their social values and also perhaps in appearance, for instance, um, our visitors from outer space might have six appendages and they might have a, a hard external carapace, for instance, chitinous, C-H-I-T-I-N, uh, like it, most insects today. Um, as to what dimension we might encounter these visitors from outer space, in, it seems to me unlikely it would be 3D, 4D, but rather perhaps in the fifth dimension or higher that we would encounter them. And so to know these visitors from outer space, we need to develop our own clear abilities as a result of the shift. These should be available to almost to everyone on Earth. And, and then we can see and talk to and, and form alliances with the star brothers and sisters from Alpha Centauri and Orion who, who are willing to maintain an accord with us with regard to um, abatement of aggressiveness, both territorial and sexual. And an accord in which uh, they respect our free will and the free will of all, all beings on this planet uh, to the extent that they don't try to, to mind control us, humans, um, as they may do the members of their own um, particular community. 
it may seem to them that this is the way to be, but these particular aspects of their lives are contrary to the way that we humans see our social order, if you understand. So it should be an interesting encounter. It should be require diplomacy, and it may result in a very fruitful interchange. Another word from the silverfish just now. Seemed like the great silverfish in the sky. I don't know what to say about that. And that has to do with the ants. Uh, as you may know, their sexuality is limited to an elite few. And the worker ants, which are by far the greatest class of ants in a particular collective of ants, never have sex at all. This is another quality that makes them very different from human beings. The great concern for sexual reproduction and the lack of concern for sexual reproduction in the vast majority of their group. I might add that there are uh, human enclaves. I'm thinking particularly of spiritual enclaves here on Earth that pattern their sexual behavior much along the lines of the ants. And so amongst those you might look, as a light worker, you might look and try to find whether those spiritual enclaves of human beings might be overlit by an Antian overlord or deva. For instance, are they highly territorially aggressive? Are they greatly interested in expanding their numbers? Um, do they emphasize that sex ought not be practiced by their members, or if practiced, very little practice? Are they very interested in developing the third eye point and the clear abilities, especially mind control? Is there a, a relative hiatus in the area of their heart chakra? For instance, might they be willing to, to do something heartless in order to promote the um, goals of their community, as might the ants that I saw today? Might they emphasize strict loyalty to their, to their group and perhaps even murder or driving of people crazy in order to, to grab their property and increase the power of their group and their ability to expand. So for the power-oriented spiritual people of the world today, there's a reason why they might take on an Antian overlord or deva, you see. And in that way they might be at odds with uh, the devas of humankind and the the normal human people. The same is true of those human groups that take on Saurian or reptilian um, overlords. The goals of reptiles in the world are very different from the goals of mammals. The, the social values of Saurians and reptiles are very different from the social values of mammals. And they're just their way of, of treating each other is quite different as well. They're child-rearing, non-existent, you know. Their, their desire for one-upmanship, major big deal. Their, their lack of fidelity towards a mate, I think in most instances, that's true. And uh, very strong on the third eye point and very predatory, right? Well, more on all that some other day. Just, just I would like to reiterate today that it seems to me very likely that certain enclaves of humankind have taken on um, overlords or devas on the astral plane and higher 
that whose pattern of teaching is very different from the pattern of teaching of the mammalian oriented um, devas that generally teach humankind. We may find, I think, Sharkian also, Sharkian overlords or devas in the area of the South Seas in particular. And there may be quite a few other anomalies to consider and to study as light workers, wayshores, pathfinders, and healers. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.